fine. You're fine, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you need to get up. You have to go to school. Yeah. Okay, get up. Can I help? Okay. Good morning. Fine. You're fine, eh? Yeah. Okay, you want to give me a hug? Ah, how was your night? Yeah. It was nice, eh? Yeah. Where was everyone? Eh? Say bye to mommy. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Be good, okay? Yeah. Okay. Good. You. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go. Eh? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Good to see you. I wasn't expecting you. Hi, Peter. You are not answering my calls. <laughs> Miriam, you know how these things are. But how are you? Jama is almost done with school. What? Wow, the girls move fast. She needs a job. Miriam, you know that's not easy. You said once she's done with school, she could get a place here. I, I know what I said. Thing is, we're full at the moment. Peter, I have a 20-year-old girl at home, in her kind of condition, doing nothing. Yeah, I understand. She just needs to be out a few hours a day. Give her a sense of independence. Hmm? She could work, she could help out in the kitchen. Look, I brought a few pictures of her at work. She can draw. She could perhaps intern in the vocational art classes here. You don't have to have a relationship with her, but just... <sighs> Peter, you said... I know what I said. But right now we are full and understaffed. But isn't this why you exist? To take on children like this? What is the point of having a whole institution to employ the differently abled if you won't even do that? She's your daughter. It's not like that. Then fix her in some way. First you said she needed to pass through basic training. I did that. And now I need to go back to work, to pay off my debts, and you promised. I know, but things were different then. There were places. Well, open a place, Peter. I need to work. I need to have Gemma gone so that I can at least take care of the both of us, and you need to help me do that. I can't leave her at home the whole day. She'll burn the place down. What about my life? When do I get to leave? I'm sorry, Miriam, I can't. Trust me, you're not the first like this, but we are above capacity. What I recommend is get a place that allows you to go with her, and then maybe you and I... What? 
What? Listen here. If something opens, I will let you know. I have a woman in the house, and she's hard to control. If she gets another episode, I do not know what will happen. She needs to feel independent and normal. There is no place that's going to give her that. Good day, Peter. This is very good. However, this job requires full-time availability. It's a pity that would be tied down by your daughter. I'm afraid we must decline your application. Your bazungu boyfriend not told you. Hey, what are you cooking? Something smells nice. Vanilla cake. I was hoping that it would be ready when you came. Oh, you're cooking for me. Oh, who is looking after your baby sister? As if everything is always for you. Anyway, how are you? How is work? It's fine. Sometimes I wonder why the day even start. Then I can get like, like a happy bride and I feel like it's so worth it. Then there are days I can have like five, by the way, all wanting the same dress. Then I even find myself wishing I had more customers like people like old fashioned things. You always have nice dresses. I would sell those old dresses. I'm a customer. <laughs> they always want the latest. Eh? They come, they say. 
I want that dress for Megan. Then when you tell them the price, they complain. Like as if Megan's dress can be cheap. Shh. So I tell them, Madam, hmm? you either get the cheaper dress or you pay the price. Kuanga, that is the price. And if you can't, there are others who can't. You've always been a push, haven't you? Uh, uh. Nag, me, you think I'm going to lose business in Borak over your financial problems? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. ah. Actually, your happiness is my happiness. So, pay and go. It's such a fuss, isn't it? Uh, choosing a dress is like choosing a boyfriend. No, 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 so my dear. So stressful. No, 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 no. Choosing a boyfriend is much easier. Ha, ha, ha. Of course, for you, maybe, yes. Ah, uh, uh. A boyfriend, at least, uh, for him can never go out of work. Who wants handsome? Always handsome, Jessica. but a dress? <laughs> Jessica, men grow old. Yes, but you'll forever be known as the one who got the her hot main guy. But these dresses, every day there is a new one. Where do you get these ideas? From your magazine? Adoring the Western culture just. Anyway, you've always wanted that kind of life. Like as if you've never wanted to leave this country. But he, Miriam. Can you not come for your nephew's wedding? Eh? Hey, is that why you have come? Yes. Must you always be so dull? You're like a tortoise. Wow. And here I was thinking that you have actually missed it. Okay, fine. Yes, I'm missing you in advance. Now we all of us are going. And if we're lucky, we can't find a way of you not staying. Jessica, you know that I want to be there. If I could, I would. So I'm not to uh, stay. Uh, so what's stopping you? Huh? What's stopping you? You have no life. You're here rotting in this house, hmm? Look at you, looking like you're 50. But I'm almost there. You don't have to show it. Hey, her nephew is finally getting married. Hey, we should all go and show this Kamzungu chick, hey, not to mess with us, the Chadi Gonzas. Ha, <laughs> no. I guess you should not bring those buzzezeze, those bufani behaviors of mind nonsense, manyanga, divorce, over separation, what, what? As if that doesn't already exist. You should have thought about that when you were dating your Muzungu with the blue eyes. Oh, Justin. Kali Justin was a nice man. Unlike your irresponsible Peter. Jessica, do not start with me. That was your immature move to prove to the family that you actually had a brain. I didn't need to prove anything. It was you guys who needed to get around the fact that Papa actually loved me more. Hey, that's why he spoilt me while well, you guys had to go and study. You know, spoilt is a cold word for ignored. Jessica, you have abandonment issues. Deal with it. You're jealous of me. In fact, you wanted to steal my Justin. So you needed some white boy to make you feel a sense of achievement? Well, bravo, you insecure child. You never had a nice word to say about him. You never had a nice word to say about any of my choices. Well, which explains why you're still single. You should be thanking me for, unlike you, I did not stupidly chase my childhood fantasies or need to prove anything to anyone. And I don't even know why this is still an issue. Anyway, Timothy said that they will be live streaming the wedding. Ah, uh, uh, no, Miriam, you need to be there. We can go shopping in London. Eh? It will be fun. There's still time. I can, okay, I can pay your ticket. I can, I even have a dress for you. Really, Jessica? Hey, you thought I was going to let you travel in your big old grandma outfits. But what is stopping you? Hmm? I said, don't tell me, Mbu, it's Jim. Oh, man. Ah, ah. You can you need to stop using her as an excuse. Let me go check on the cake. Oh, so now you're running away. You wouldn't understand. Oh, God. She's 20 years old now. She can't even take herself to that special needs school. Miriam! Yes. And when she comes home, someone needs to take care of her. Someone needs to bath her. Someone needs to make sure she doesn't hurt herself. Then get help. You know it's expensive. And those who come don't care enough for her. They just sit and watch TV. So, fine, we'll pitch in. No, you won't. It's been 20 years. What makes you think that you'll start caring now? Besides, a break in her routine and she can become hostile. You know what? Just put her in a home for the disabled. Jessica! What? Miriam, it's a fact. The kid is disabled. Huh? She has grown up now and you can no longer look after her. Oh my God, she's slowing down your life. 
You know, you would have already been married by now, but your entire world, life, revolves around this child. In fact, me, if she has the brains to go to that school and do art, then she has enough brains to understand that she cannot look after her forever. So I should just abandon her like every other ordinary invalid? Oh, come on. No! That is what you are saying. You are saying that I should dump her in some rotten government-run institution with kids drooling saliva. No! Why they don't have enough medication or manpower to give my daughter the attention that she needs. That she thrives on. You come here to tell me to go to the UK and attend the wedding of my nephew who cares nothing about his cousin. He won't even speak to her for more than 30 seconds on phone because he has no patience. Jessica. You are just as strategic as my good-for-nothing husband. Who just saw marriage as this one big business deal. But on the inside, you're negligent. Money-seeking, social climbing, and none of you cares about the relationship. That's not true. Gemma is my daughter, Jessica. My blood. Abled or differently abled. And I intend on giving her the best, regardless of if my family is there or not. Wait, at the expense of your life. This is my life, Jessica! I know you meant what you said. I know you all thought that I should have left her at the hospital. You thought that I shouldn't have had her at all. That I should have left with Peter and let someone else decide her fate. Peter left me because his daughter is not normal. And now all my friends have left because my entire life has become abnormal. You think I do nothing? She's my daughter, Jessica. The fact that she can do all that she does now is because I have done something. It is something. It's easy for you. Come and go. Detach yourself. But I can't. I can't. I am the most consistent person in her life. Jessica, I want to go for the wedding. I want to go travel, see the world, maybe leave this country, but I can't. I can't leave someone's God-given life and trade it as a stepping stone for mine. I can't. And I won't. Ah, uh -uh, no, don't just, just don't.
Stranger passes by, gives a smile. I